What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Realm Status, your monthly news for everything Camelot Unchained. I am your host, Swiper, and this week we have a special episode. So, last week we thought we were going to get some news about Camelot Unchained, but we got some news about this new game that they're developing called Ragnarok, or The Last Stand Ragnarok. So, a lot of us were kind of uneasy about this. So, this week, MJ followed through and gave us some updates on Camelot Unchained. And to be honest with you, I was a little upset last week, but this week, everything has turned around. So if you want to find out why, stick around. Let's go. So if you're new to my channel or you've been following me, Typically, each month I go over some of my favorite items that are in development and some of my favorite questions. Now, this week's a bit different because they went over a ton of stuff that they've been working on. They also went over a roadmap, which we haven't seen, well, haven't seen in a long time if we've ever seen one. And also, uh, they did some questions. So, before I get started, I would like to apologize for my last video. Um, I made a comment about comparing test for Camelot Unchained and comparing Ragnarok. And I made the assumption saying that, hey, you know, Ragnarok looks a lot better than Tess. But what I didn't realize until after the fact was the code I was testing was older code. So it wasn't a fair comparison. So again, I'd like to apologize. I gave some misinformation and I just want to clear that up. So anyway, we have a lot to go over. So let's get started. All right, everybody, let's start with the features. So starting with number one, ability system update. So this is going to be crucial because as you can see in this list, projectiles and projectile prediction and responsiveness is something that they've been working on for some time now and they need to get right because if you think about it, you're going to be using siege that's considered a projectile. Your characters, whether they're mages or archers or whatever, those some of those abilities or almost all those abilities are going to be considered projectiles. So they need to get this right. Now, number two, Overmind. This is going to be huge because Overmind is really going to control a lot of the events and a lot of the things that we're basically interacting with, including the NPCs and maybe even including the Veil Storms and when they occur and how they occur. So this needs to be right. They need to get this right. All right. And number three, I'll kind of combine with NPCs and improve character collision. Character collision is huge to me because I loved it in Warhammer. I love the fact that when you were in battle, the tanks can stand up right in front of you and nobody could get in front of them as long as they did their job. And that is one thing that I love and I think is going to prevent zerging or help zerging. I know you can't prevent zerging, but I know I feel like it's going to help. Now, NPCs are going to be huge because in Ragnarok, that's what we're going to be fighting, NPCs. And when we're in CU... NPCs are going to be defending and they're going to be helping us and we're going to be attacking them. So we want them to be smart. We want them to be challenging and we want to be able to depend on them and not just be a worthless sack of rocks. All right, moving on to number four, graphics. Now, as you can tell, this list is huge, right? And just to touch on some of these, it looks like they're working on reflections and the lighting system. And it looks like they're working on some of the flickering and all the textures. So overall, it looks like they're really going to make this game look a lot better. And within the next 90 days, we're going to see more improvements. Now, I am a snob when it comes to graphics, but I can also appreciate different types of art styles. So overall, I'm very happy about this. The better the game is going to look, the more I'm going to get into it. Now, I know, you know, graphics aren't everything. Really, it comes down to gameplay for a lot of players. But for me, it's a mixture of both. You know, the gameplay has to be fun, but the game also has to look good. You know, some of these games that look like utter crap because back in the day, they that was good. That's what was up in the technology. And the gameplay apparently is really good. But there is a snob in me that has to say, oh, I know this gameplay is good and it can be good, but I just can't get into it. So... The direction that Camelot and Chain is going, I'm extremely happy with. Moving on to the last one, Warbands, Orders, and Battle Groups. So I don't think these are officially done, right? But they're working on it. And we know that in Ragnarok, you can group up because we're going to have to group up to defend against all these NPCs. So it sounds like they've been trying to make improvements on this and get this up and running. So this is all really good news. So there are a ton of other updates that I'm not going over because I want to keep this video short, but 
Hey, again, you can always check this out on the their website and their forums. I'm sure they'll post it and also on their video and also here, right, as well. All right, next, I want to move on to the 90-day plan from February to May. So I'll put that up on this screen as well. But just to quickly go over some of the highlighted things that I really like to see here, um, the new scenario. Now, to my understanding, it sounds like there is going to be a keep in the middle of the map or some kind of castle or some kind of objective that the realms need to fight over. And this was something that I kind of said on the forums, like, okay, I'm not going to take credit or whatever. But, you know, like in Dark Age Camelot, where you had the three realms and you had the keep in the middle. And I think these are like the battlegrounds. Now, I always thought that was kind of a cool concept, just something quick that you could jump into and just do right away for 20, 30 minutes if you didn't have a lot of time to play. Well, I'm hoping that this is something very similar to what they're doing in the scenario. That is my understanding. Now, another thing that they brought up, which I am super stoked about and shocked and so happy about, is that they brought up the Devout. And from what I'm gathering, it sounds like they're either working on it or they maybe want it done within the next 90 days. I mean, it wasn't totally clear, but to be quite honest, this is so big for me because in my last video that I did, I specifically said the devout. Now, I'm not saying they watch my videos, but I think a lot of people were agreeing with me and saying things on the forums about the devout. So that was huge for me because the devout, once you get the devout in there, then you just have the crafters. But speaking of classes, MJ did mention that they might maybe 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 we'll put the spirit mages in and if they put the spirit mages in for launch i will probably die because i've been wanting to play the slaughter wolf like that has been the character that i've been wanting to play but i told myself well i'm gonna have to pick something else because that's going to be in the extender pack and again that is also something i brought up in my video so this stream that they did on friday really hit a lot of positives for me and maybe they're not listening to my videos, maybe they're not watching it, but I sure feel like I'm being heard and it feels really, really good. So anyway, let's talk about some of the other things um, that I even mentioned before. They're gonna be working on war bands. They're gonna be working on the UI updates. Um, looks like they're doing some engine stuff as well with client memory and performance improvements, which is gonna be great. They're gonna improve 3D pathing. So some of these things that you're seeing in their roadmap are things that they've been working on for the past six months and they're only going to improve upon. So overall, this has been fantastic. Like I am super excited and almost reinvigorated about this game and I'm super, super pumped. So anyway, let's move on to the questions. All right, starting with question number one. Is this going to be a good representation of the final visuals of CU? Now, when I say this, uh, I'm specifically talking about the cherry keep and what people were witnessing. So I'll go ahead and throw that up on the video so you guys can see. So the response to this was within the next 90 days, we're gonna see improvements. And until they lock down the lighting model, because this is what ultimately affects your vision, they're not gonna add in like a lot of art assets because once they add in an asset and then they change the lighting model, it basically changes the way the art looks and they don't wanna have to ask the art team to go ahead and do that model again because the lighting changed so this was actually a really good question because i'm not a programmer i took some programming courses but i'm not a programmer so i didn't really understand this or know this so this was really good to know and honestly it makes me feel better because sometimes i'm always like well why don't they make these guys look cooler or why don't they do this or why don't they do that so that makes perfect sense all right moving on to question number two when will classes get unique features so this was a great question because i know for a fact that some of the classes already have some of these but there's not a lot of them like there isn't a lot of them so basically mark's answer was we want to get more classes out there including the devout and maybe another class so i'm thinking that's going to be the uh, spirit mages slaughter wolf yes so anyway he also said that he wants the backers to get in there start creating their characters and manipulating abilities putting them together and just using it against each other to really test out how all these things are going to work so he didn't give an exact date but basically that was his answer so i don't think we're going to see a lot of the unique features anytime soon but hey maybe when the devout is out and maybe the spirit mages if 
they are going to do this. My hopes are extremely up and I know they shouldn't be, but he said something about it. We will start to see some more of these unique features. All right, moving on to question number three. If you could start over and do something different, what would you do differently? So basically he said that he probably would have asked for more money up front. Now, I don't think he meant really like by the backers or anything. I think he went by the investors. And the reason behind this is because the mobile market blew up. The VR market blew up. Amazon, Facebook, and Google also blew up. So all these companies needed engineers the same time that Camilla and Chain needed engineers. And this was something that was very difficult for them to compete with. Now, if he had more money, maybe he could have easily recruited more people, but that is one of the things he would have done over again. Now, overall, I like these questions because you kind of get a sense of where their mind is at and you kind of understand like, hey, okay, they actually understand what, what went wrong and how to like fix it next time. But personally, I mean, how, how does anybody know any of these markets were going to blow up? I mean, God, mobile? I mean, mobile? I hate mobile games. I Anytime I see anything mobile, it's like it, it's gone out of my head. I I just, I can't stand it. Like I need a big screen. I need a mouse and a keyboard. I need a controller. I need these things to play a game and enjoy it. I can't sit there with my two thumbs and play a game. But anyway, let's not go down that road. I don't need to rant for like hours about it. All right, moving on to question number four. And honestly, everybody, this was an awesome question because the response was so heartfelt. And if you haven't seen their YouTube video, I honestly would recommend watching it. I know it's long, but it's worth watching for the first couple minutes and also for this question. So anyway, let's get to the question. What is a known and upcoming challenge you think you may face in the future? At this point, you're starting to see MJ get a little teary and a little choked up and the words are kind of, you know, he's looking around and it's hard for him to say, but basically what he says is people giving him another chance. And you could see the pain in his eyes and, and how he knew he, you know, made a mistake and how he deeply regretted it. And, you know, he's always one to take pride and being straightforward and he always takes responsibility and this was one thing me personally which was so hard for me to witness last week because he has always been straightforward he's always been transparent no matter how many people say he's not he has been and always has been but that moment last week it didn't feel like he was and it was really shocking and it hurt but the fact that now he's owning it he's apologizing for it and he's not running away from it and within a week well really a couple days if you watch the forums he was there trying to talk to people and trying to make his point but anyway it was just really heartwarming and you really see how much he cares and how much he loves this game and how he wants it to release so anyway he kind of gathered himself and said that in terms of the team they don't really have one because a lot of the things that were difficult or are difficult are done or are almost done and that actually is a really good sign because a lot of the difficult things like the destruction linuxification and everything like that that is almost done or already done so overall this this is fantastic news and I cannot wait to see what is going to happen in the future. All right, ending with question number five, is what you showed us considered gameplay? So remember, this is a uh, gameplay of the cherry keep and the siege and people running around and all that good stuff, right? Anyway, Mark basically says that, yeah, some of it is. The siege gameplay is. Controlling the characters is. And he kind of goes off on a little bit of a tangent, but it kind of wraps around together. So he basically says that you're witnessing like a demo, right? But people are in it now. People are jumping in it at that time. And you're seeing the tech, you're seeing destruction, you're seeing all these elements of gameplay right now he says that this isn't going to be a fair representation of what you're going to be doing every night but you're going to be destroying buildings you're going to see destruction you're going to be seeing a lot of these things that this demo is providing us or this scenario really because this is a scenario so overall you're going to see a lot of these aspects now it's not going to be like this every night and it's not going to be this exact representation but it is gameplay all right ladies and gentlemen that is going to do it for me today before i head out i want to say a couple things First, I want to thank Mark for taking ownership and apologizing and really seeing the perspective of what all of us were saying and how we were feeling. And, you know, he didn't ban anybody. And honestly, I truly think that he had this image in his mind where creating this game and, and showing us this, he really thought that a lot more people were going to take to it. And I think he saw a lot of the logical things. And honestly... I can't fault him for that, but the fact that he came on and apologized and recognized, you know, what he did and how it made people feel and the backers and how many years we've been supporting them, you know, I, I can only just thank him because when I look around the industry, the gaming industry, there's a lot of shady crap that goes on and it's getting unbearable 
some games that we all grew up playing aren't even the same games anymore. Bigger companies have taken them over, have essentially kind of ruined them and stripped them down into what they call now MMORPGs. And they constantly make mistakes. They constantly are in the news and they're constantly making a ton of money. They really are. And here is this small studio that makes one mistake. And first thing they do is come out and apologize and try to reach out to all of us and make things better. And to me, that is amazing. And it's not lawyered up bull crap that a lot of these game companies do. So again, I really appreciate everything that they're doing for this game, for both games, and I'm looking forward to playing both of them. Now, with all that being said, I know there's going to be updates for Camelot Unchained and for the Final Stand Ragnarok. What I'd like to do is report on both of these games. So for people that have interest in both of these games, they'll have somewhere to go to get updates. Now, I'll probably do these separate. So until I kind of figure out how they're going to structure their updates and, you know, what they're going to do with this game and what are their plans and things like that, I I'd like to report on both. Um, this way, for anybody that doesn't want to hear about Ragnarok, you can listen to my CU stuff. And for somebody that that wants to hear both you can listen to both so anyhow thank you very much uh, for checking out this video and sticking with me i hope you have a great day and if you found this helpful or useful in any way please hit the thumbs up and subscribe button thank you so much have a great weekend see ya Need more Camelot Unchained in your life? Check out Abduct Gaming today, February 9th. They're doing another vodcast, and these guys have been around for a very long time, so they are definitely worth checking out. I will put their links in the description below. Make sure to follow them and ring that bell.